Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a follow-up of my previous video in case you missed that. I'll be sure to link it down below and up in the eye. Basically, I just took you on a tour of my eyeshadow palette collection. I went through and swatched all of them. The video was like over 40 minutes long. There's over 70 palettes in it with close-ups, swatches, mini reviews. If you have been on the hunt for an eyeshadow palette, that would be a great one to reference. I didn't show any of like my limited edition palettes or things like that just because I didn't want to show something and you end up loving it and not be able to get your hands on it because that just sounds really mean. So currently available palettes, but I mean, there's still, like I said, over 70 in there. Also going through and decluttering the drawers behind me. So some of them I go through like drawer by drawers, others I show you a scan of the drawer and then just come back and present the products that I'm decluttering. I've done several declutters here on my channel. I'll be sure to link the playlist down below. So I thought I would go ahead and start off with the palette since like I said, it's a follow-up and then I'll take you into the drawers behind me. Out of all the palettes that we discussed, I think these were two that I told you right away that I was going to get rid of. First up, we have the Makeup Revolution at Soph X Extra Spice. I'd mentioned that when I first bought this palette, it was great, but I have noticed, unfortunately, like it's just, I think it's gotten to the point where it has expired because a lot of the shades just don't feel the same anymore. They're not quite as creamy. Eyeshadow palettes, just like every other makeup product, has an expiration date, but I'd mentioned in that collection video that eyeshadow palettes and face powders, I feel like unless there's a weird smell or something like growing on it, I just continue to use them. I mean, if I spent that sort of money on a palette, I wanna get all these that I can out of it, but that one I definitely noticed kind of turned. Now, another palette that I plan on decluttering, this is from Iconic London. I got this in my Glossy Box Advent Calendar last year. There's actually nothing wrong with the palette. I mean, it's a little bit thick, but it would be an ideal palette to travel with just because you have the mirror, then you have a large array of just natural, neutral shades. There's nothing wrong with this palette, but if I'm gonna go for a shape like that, I just have other palettes that I prefer. Plus, I just don't think this is worth the actual retail price. I'd be totally wrong, but I'm almost positive this palette is supposed to be like in the $60 range. I think there's other, oh, that got stuck on my ring, other palettes out there that have the same sort of color story that are much more affordable. So I'm getting rid of that. Another one that I'm decluttering is the Wet n Wild Saved by the Bell collection. If you guys are curious about this palette, I did do an entire review, like tutorial of the collection. This palette, I was actually shocked by some of the mattes. They worked really well, but it's another palette where it's fine, there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm just not gonna get the use out of it, so I'd rather pass it on to friends. These two palettes should also be familiar if you keep up with my videos. I just talked about these in a recent speed reviews, swatched all of them for you and wore them on my eyes. These are from JCat Beauty. They're the Viva La Musical and then Viva La Fiesta 24 color pigment palette. Now the mattes in here, they're not bad, but they're not that great. However, the metallics are like creamy, really nice, super just like pigmented, but I prefer the smaller palettes from JCat Beauty, specifically the Noche palette in the Dia and Noche little mini. I think those are 12 or 16 pan palettes. I just found those to be a bit more consistent than these. However, if you're just starting off with makeup and you're looking to expand your colorful shadows or metallic shadows, I think these would be a great option, especially for the price point. Sadly, I am getting rid of a Nabla palette. I actually adore the formula of Nabla shadows. However, I mentioned, oh my gosh, I knew I wasn't gonna get lucky. I accidentally broke one of the black shadows of all the shades in these palettes. Of course, it had to be a black one, which happens to be the messiest. And now I just keep getting black shadow. Like I've mopped this floor and I still somehow managed to get black like on the bottom of my foot or on my hand. And as you can see, it's very pigmented. While I like it, I just use the other Nabla palettes in my collection more. So I'd like to give this to a friend or family member because I think they would get great use out of it. You do have some fun gem tones in here. Nabla shadows are just phenomenal. I just love how richly pigmented they are. I love the unique formulas. They have these really cool like sheer metallic washes of color, but then you have super intense foiled ones that really pack a punch. I just love their formula. Then I decided to pass on the Hamish, what are you called? I think it was Rose something palette. I kind of did a mini comparison of this to Huda Beauty. 
That one didn't break. Clearly those shadows are pressed down, which I even said that they felt a lot firmer, but didn't break, but man down. Then sadly, I've been holding on to this one for so long. I tried to get myself to declutter it last time in an eyeshadow declutter video, and I just couldn't do it because of the packaging. But honestly, the only shade that I used in here was this green shade right here, just because it was this really pretty kind of like olive sage green. This is the Smashbox Hood Witch palette. I have a friend who I already have in mind for that palette. I know she'll love it. Then I did already kind of do a spoiler in the collection video, both of these Huda Beauty mini obsessions. We have Amethyst and then Ruby. I've been hoarding these mini obsessions palettes just because I love the way that they look all lined up. But these are two that I just didn't get use out of. If you've had your eyes on this one, go check out the comparison palette that I used. Next to this one, the swatches of the more affordable one were actually way better than the Amethyst one. Okay, just a couple more palettes and then we'll get into the drawers behind me. And Wild Color Icon Call Me Sunshine. I don't know if it's just this specific palette that wasn't good, but I hated it. It was so dry, the shadows were so firmly pressed. I felt like I really had to mash my finger in there and it just still wasn't good. Then I'm not even gonna open this because I need to really wipe it down. Persona Identity 2, while the mattes in here are beautiful, clearly the black is very pigmented. I just don't reach for it. I think I, the original Identity palette is incredible. Identity 2 just, I mean the formulas are the same. They're beautiful, they're blendable, they're really easy to work with. I just never really reached for it. Then one of the ColourPop Quince. I said that I felt like I had all these shades and more in the Stone Fox palette, so I thought it was time to get rid of that. I've been holding on to this Too Faced Razzle Dazzle Berry, I think it's called, and I was really only holding on to it for this pink metallic shade here, but it's just time to let it go. Um, a friend's daughter loves purple shadows. Plus, I think this packaging will be perfect for her. She's a teen. This will be right up her alley. This one is kind of sad just because I don't know, I feel like since it's not available anymore, I'm like, Dana, why would you do that? But I don't need it. This is the ABH Self Made palette. While I love Pink Champagne, I know that shade is in a few of her other palettes and I just, I, I don't ever reach for this one. So it was time for that to go, as well as the original Lorac Unzipped. This was a holy grail of mine for, I mean, years. But now um, I just, I find them to be way drier than what I remembered. And I decided to keep the Lorac Gold Unzipped and then pass on this one. And then the very final palette, I'm actually not fully decluttering this palette. This is the Juvia's Masquerade Mini. If you've been here a while, you know I freaking adore Newbie in Two. While I like this palette, I really only use these and this shade here. So I have several empty like Z palettes and old Makeup Geek palettes and MAC palettes to where I'm gonna go ahead and depot these and keep them. I use these shadows down here enough to where it's worth like depotting for me. That's really it for palettes. There was a few mini like singles, but I don't know, I didn't wanna go through and have to remember what every single single was because I have MAC, Makeup Geek, Makeup Forever. I did declutter like 15 to 20 singles as well. And then if you are curious what I have on my eyes today, this is what I love about decluttering. Anytime I declutter and I swatch things, I forget how beautiful like old products that used to be holy grails for me are. Today, I used one of my like original MAC palettes. Well not original in the outer packaging, but these were like original MAC shades that I bought years ago. You guys woodwinked, don't you remember how good that was? I have that all over my lid and then like I think Sable and a few other shades. Oh, I pretty much have all MAC on except for like foundation and eyebrows. I'm wearing Warm Soul, Double Gleam, Whirl, and then I think Candy Box, Candy something on my lips. Oh, so good, I love it. I'm definitely falling right back into love with MAC. And there are the palettes. Let's go ahead and dive into the drawers behind me now. Hopefully this inspires you to declutter some. As I mentioned earlier on, I declutter, I would say every couple of months, sometimes even every few weeks, specifically for lip products. I've been really good about decluttering lip products just because those are products that go bad quickly and I'd rather other people get use out of those than them just sit in a drawer and expire. So I didn't have too many to show you today because that's something that I consistently declutter, but okay. Enough with that, let's go ahead and dive right in. Over here in this bin, I keep more of my like pore blurring and smoothing primers. Most of these are going to stay. I did mention in a recent video that I find the Revlon Prime Plus 
pretty much does the exact same thing as the one size. One of these is a little bit tackier. I think it's the Secure the Blur. I haven't used this one in a while, but for the most part, when I wear these side by side, they look pretty identical. I'm only holding on to this one because I have a dupes video that I need to film. I'm still holding on to this one from Essence. I've only used it once or twice. To be honest, I wasn't crazy about it, but I do have a full face of Essence coming up. My most recent favorite blurring primer though is this one from Etude House. This is their face blur in smoothing. So it's smoothing, but it leaves behind this really nice, like brightened kind of pearly pink brightening effect. Like it's not glowy, but it's just brightening. It's like a matte glow. It's interesting. I don't know. I love it. It comes in, I think, mattifying and maybe hydrating. I've only tried the smoothing so far. Is this one from Lancome? It's nice, but I just don't really reach for it as much. There was like a good, probably like solid two months where I was going to it nonstop, but since then I've kind of stopped and I prefer these more. So that's going to be the first we say goodbye to. With the MAC strobe creams, I really only ever use this original one, which is in gold light. I hardly ever use this pink light. You can mix this with your foundation. You can wear it as a base. You could use it as like a highlighter on top. You can use it on your body all over. It is really pretty, but I just don't really use the pink one much. So that's another declutter. This actually needs to go. It still works, but I mean, there's other primers in here that are probably older, but I just noticed that whenever I squeeze it out, the whipped texture isn't quite quite the same. This is from Origins, the original Skin Pore Perfecting Cooling Primer with Willow Herb Mel, and the texture just isn't the same. So unfortunately, this is one that just needs to be tossed. This is the Milani Glow Hydrating Skin Tint. I talked about this in my drugstore skin tints video. I feel like I referenced that video a little bit too often. I put it in this primer drawer because this gave zero coverage. This was not a skin tint in my opinion. It was almost just like a first layer glowy base. I just have other primers that I prefer. Like I said, it's not even a primer, but other priming products that I prefer. And I don't think this is enough to be a skin tint. So it's, it's just time to go. I have two of these, maybe even three. No, I think just two of the Danessa Myricks ones. I don't need to keep both of them. Prism FX hydrating lotions, one in gold, and then I don't know what this is in. All right, so there are the two lotions swatched side by side. As you can see, gold has more of that gold shift to it. And then this one here, this is almost like the VDL one, how it has that really high, like brightening bluish lavender tone. Um, I do like both of them, but this does look pretty similar to the VDL one. So I think I'm gonna pass on this and I'll let the person keep the lid and keep the wood. <laughs> Without a lid, this, I swear I've been using this for so long. I don't get how I have yet to finish it. It, it does, it smells funky. Unfortunately, this one, it's just time to go. This was a favorite for a very long time though. Let me go ahead and put that with the Origins since it's going in the trash. We have a few, well, a lot of other primers. The Hamish Artless Glow Base. Um, I'm still working on another Collective K-Beauty video, so I do want to keep that. Ooh, that is really pretty, but clearly I haven't been using it, so we'll give it to somebody else who can get use out of it. All right, so here is the after. This looks much better. I could probably get rid of the Laneige Glowy Makeup Serum. I mentioned this in a previous video where I felt like I got the same effect from the Wet n Wild Primer Serum, but I just bought this, so I don't want to get rid of it yet, but... It's definitely nothing amazing. For the products that I'm getting rid of, I've been holding on to these as backups. While I love the Laura Mercier primers, clearly I have enough. I'm not gonna get through them, so I'd rather put these in a giveaway or give them to friends and family. And then the other two that I'm getting rid of, the Wet n Wild, really, can we focus please, primer serum, only because I recently got this one. It's their primer serum as well, but it has like pumpkin extract in it and something about it I just like a little bit more. So I'm gonna keep this, get rid of this one. This is a great option from the drugstore if you're just looking for a really easy hydrating primer. And then this Smashbox primer oil. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my empties and call it quits. I mean, it's down here and it's gotten to the point now where I've had it for so long, the smell has kind of turned. So, I mean, I loved it. I would say I pretty much finished it. I do have a new one that I can open up whenever I'm ready. But this is one that I love. This and the Smashbox Primerizer are both amazing. Here is my cream cheek drawer that is an absolute hot mess right now. Honestly, there's probably nothing that's going to be decluttered from here, but let me clean it either way. All right, so here's the after for drawer number three. I love cream cheek products. 
that's why there's a lot going on. But I did get rid of a few things. This is something that I recently got from YesStyle. It came from the Hanbok Roman collection. Unfortunately, this was just way too sheer. When I first ordered it from the picture, I thought it was kind of like the Patrick Ta where it was a cream and a powder. The bottom is actually just a sponge. And this cream, while the color is pretty, it is so, so light. Like you'd have to be ultra fair to wear this. It's a shame because the formula is really like creamy and thin, kind of like a veil. Then I'm getting rid of another one of the Jouer Blush and Bloom sticks. All the colors are really pretty. I feel like I had other ones that were similar. I decided to keep this one versus this one here. This one came from Kaja. While the concept is really cute, it's like this little heart stamp that you press into the blush. I never used the stamp. I do have the bronzer as well. This color I just wasn't crazy about. A little bit too hot pink for me. And then one of the Pixie on the Glow blushes. These remind me of little mini deodorants. I decided to keep more of like the poppy shade and then the orange and then pass on this one. This is probably the most everyday sort of shade so I know I have a friend or family member who would love this one. I feel like I just did a bronzer declutter not too long ago but I'll see if we can at least get rid of two things in this drawer. I love bronzers, okay? So I'm only getting rid of two things. We have the MAC Patrick Star Bronzer in Give Me Life, and then another MAC product. This is their Sculpt and Shape Contour Palette. There's nothing wrong with it, but I remember a long time ago, I used to love the shade Emphasize, just to highlight on the under eyes. I just, I never gravitate towards it. I have plenty of MAC bronzers here that somebody else could get much more use out of this. So out of this entire drawer, these are the only two things that are leaving. Moving on to the highlighter drawer. This is a drawer where every time I'm thinking like, oh, I can cut this down by 50%. And then clearly that never happens. So there's hair in here. I need to vacuum this drawer for sure. I'm hoping for like five products, maybe seven. We shall see. So for highlighters, I actually didn't do it too bad. First up, we had this quad from Makeup Revolution. There's nothing wrong with this. I was actually torn because I love this shade here, but after swatching several of my palettes, I had several options that were similar, and that was like the main shade that I was reaching for in this quad. So that's leaving this pixie one. I really like this highlighter. Well, actually this whole top row is good, but I'm only using three of the nine shades, so I just didn't think it was really worth keeping. This Physician's Formula one, Diamond Dust, is the right name. It's just like a glitter dust ball, wasn't for me. I haven't even opened this J Cat Beauty one, but if you've never tried any of their You Glow Girl highlighters, they're actually really nice. I kept the boob one from them, looks like baloney barb. These quad, not quads, like trios from CoverGirl, these are the creamiest, silkiest, most high shine metallic powders ever. I did keep two of the palettes here, but I decided to get rid of this one. I'm getting rid of Jouer Tan Lines. While it's beautiful, it definitely is darker on me. I was using it more as like a bronzer topper, but I have other shades that I use more for that. Then we have Laura Mercier Indiscretion. I have so many, and this is one that I just, a color that I don't use quite as often. I think there's a crack in this one. It's beautiful, but like I said, I have other shades I use more. And then finally, this Makeup Forever highlighter. I don't even know what the actual name is, but it hasn't gotten much love in quite a while. So here are the products that I decided to keep in my collection. I've been using the Bobbi Brown Shimmer Bricks again a lot lately. I missed those. And then I keep on going back and forth with Fuego. You know what? I think I am going to get rid of it. Next up is blushes. This is another drawer that I did semi-recently. I've mentioned in previous videos that when it comes to NARS blush palettes, that is definitely a collector item for me. I have been able to get rid of like maybe two to three here over the years, but I just love having NARS blush palettes. Every holiday, I always get them. I adore them. And then just a whole bunch of singles here as well as some like MAC, ColourPop, and Makeup Geek singles. The blushes we are saying goodbye to, Kevin Aquan, Sunset Cream. Crush, I think. Oh no, just Sunset. This is a really cool ombre effect one. I never really mess with this area though. I was always just going in with this end over here, but I have a NARS blush that looks pretty similar. This is one of the blushes that came in the Or Could You Not collection from ColourPop. If you'd like to see a tutorial swatches on that, I'll go ahead and link it up above. We have another ColourPop blush. This is Foxy. There's a lot of glitter in there. The actual base color is pretty, but a little bit too much shimmer. This one from the Wet n Wild Saved by the Bell collection. I have this one, Menage a Moi collection. It's just 
another very glittery blush. I don't mind shimmery blushes, but sometimes some of the ColourPop ones, like all the glitter just sits on top of your skin. I just don't like the look of it. Then we have the, or one of the Tarte Amazonian Clay Blushes in Natural Beauty. As you can see, I still saved a lot of those. Okay, I can't get this open. It looks pretty similar to the outer packaging. Finally, Laura Mercier Guava. I actually have an extra of this. This is a blush that I really like to layer with, I think it's either chai or crap, or peach bellini, one of the two, but somehow there were two in there. This drawer I have loose pigments, glitters, um, tons of color pop, and just random like pressed pigment sort of shadows. And I recently got back into pigments. On my eyes today, I have one of the Inglot pigments, not this one, the one that I have on is I think from like the JLo collection a while ago. Here's everything I decluttered from that drawer. The only reason I'm getting rid of these two NARS Power Chrome loose pigments is because they were somehow duplicates. I personally love these. A couple of ColourPop Super Shock shadows that I'm getting rid of. Unfortunately, a lot of them were dried out. Those just went in the trash. These were still good. We have some loose pigments, another cream shadow that's from JCAT Beauty, some of the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Glitters, and then one liquid shadow from The Balm. Here is the after of this drawer. I went through and swatched all of my ColourPop Super Shock shadows. I'm feeling so inspired now. There's so many amazing shades that I forgot about. Several like of my K-Beauty pressed pigments, NARS ones, liquid shadows, shadows. I always feel so much better after cleaning things out because then I get so excited to reuse things that I haven't played with in a while. All right, then the next drawer, I still have to wipe down all the fronts of the drawers. This is where I just have single shadows, mini palettes, all of my cream shadow sticks, my Danessa Myricks color fix shadows, some eyeshadow primers, and just like mini quads and palettes. There's not too much leaving this drawer. I do have a handful of the ColourPop color sticks. Unfortunately, I just don't care for the formula of these. You'll hear more about these in my upcoming disappointing products video. I'm also getting rid of one of my NARS mini palettes. This one is in quartz. There's nothing wrong with it. I just don't reach for it too often. The shades are actually really pretty couple like jewel tones, some neutrals, and then one of the ColourPop mini quints. This one is in Cherish. I did an entire lipstick declutter over on my stories. I used to have all of this plus like a spinning tower. I got rid of so many lipsticks. I think just with MAC lipsticks, there was over like 20 or 30. So these are the lipsticks that I have left. And then over here, we just have some matte liquid lipsticks and then various like lip stains, lip crayons, things like that. I did also quickly go through my setting sprays. Here are the three that I'm getting rid of. As for concealers, this Huda Beauty one's too dark. The Laura Mercier one, I already have that shade. The Pacifica one, that one was a bit dark. And then the Jouer Essential High Coverage Concealer pen. I have one other shade that suits me a bit better. And to be honest, I actually prefer to use these more as contouring wands more so than concealer. And then for eyebrows, we have several K-Beauty ones where the shade just wasn't right. And then two brow gels. One is a K-Beauty brand. I think it's a peel. And then the Laura Mercier Clear Brow Gel. If you've been here a while, then you know I just always reach for my got to be hair gel. And then the very final two products are the Skin Paradise from L'Oreal. I talked about these in that drugstore skin tints video that I referred to earlier. They're not bad. Bad. they're just a little bit too matte for me not even fully matte it's more of like a natural finish but it does kind of start off a little bit more on the matte side so here's one more quick overview of everything that's getting decluttered I actually just saw a friend the other day so I gave her a few of the things that aren't shown in here also I totally forgot to go over loose powders with you guys I am getting rid of two of the Huda Beauty powders the translucent one and then banana bread a cokey powder a cover effects one this Becca one I think it made the cut in a previous VC clutter where I was like, I'm going to give it another chance. No, just didn't work. And I did have several lip products. I love these pillow balms, but they sent two of the bananas. So that can go. And then I did end up getting rid of two more primers. This Peach C one, it's just an illuminating primer. I just expected more out of it. I have other ones that I prefer. And then I got this one from Pure Cosmetics, but I don't really get much redness. So I don't really have any use for that. And I think that was really the only other addition. Oh, this is Jouer Foundation. This is just too high coverage for me. And then the Benefit Brow Powder. All right, so there you have it, my most recent declutter. If you like to see more of these videos, like I said, I will go ahead and link my declutter playlist down below. I hope you enjoy. I find these videos really motivating. Anytime I see someone like cleaning or decluttering, gets my butt into gear and makes me want to do the same thing. Let me know what other videos you guys would like to see this week. If you aren't already, definitely go check me out on Instagram. I'm always showing you just like random behind the scenes things that I love and just, I don't know, recipes, randoms.
whatever. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.